Hello, I'm Joseph Bendy. And I'm Sandra Spriggs. This is the new City Walk attraction at Universal Studios Hollywood, a recreation of some of the best places in Los Angeles. You know, getting around here in City Walk is real easy. All you need for transportation are your two feet. But in a real city, getting around, well, that's a little more complicated. Do freeways drive you to the edge? I'm going to explore the psychological wear and tear of freeway stress. For some, it can be a serious problem. Driving a car in a strange city can cause more than stress. It contributes to air pollution and traffic congestion. I'll show you the solution for touring that's as environmentally conscious as it is stress-free. Is there an electric car in your future? Battery-driven vehicles are already here, but will they get you where you want to go? I've got the unexpected answers. All this and a lot more on Transit 2000. You may not have to pay a toll to drive on a California freeway, but freeway driving does take a different kind of toll. I didn't know what was happening to me. I, I thought that I was beginning to lose my mind, that's, that there was a, a crazy strain in it I didn't know about that was coming out, that it was mental illness. I had to close my eyes and clench my fists and have a, a jacket or a blanket to put over my face so I could breathe my air instead of the fumes from another car. I, I felt like my heart was in my throat and I kept reminding myself I'm 38 years old, I haven't driven all these years, why should I start driving now? The terrors these women are describing come from a source of stress in America and especially Southern California. Freeway driving. The CEO of Commuter Transportation Services, a nonprofit company promoting commuter alternatives, is Jim Sims. Year after year, every survey we do, it's stress is their number one complaint related to the commute. People tell us when they come home, they have to unwind. When they uh, get to the office, they have to unwind. And it's related to fighting that traffic by yourself. No one is immune, but to some, freeway stress can be overwhelming. Teresa, a television director, Debbie, a housewife and mother, and Nancy, a corporate executive. The way people drive in L.A. really frightened me. Everybody drives, if you don't go the minute the light changes, or if you're not going 15 minutes over, or 15 miles over the speed limit, people start honking their horns. and. If you don't turn immediately when you get to the corner, if you're looking to see if there's somebody coming, everyone starts beeping at you. And, and I, I felt so pressured to make decisions that I knew I didn't have to make right away, but L.A. drivers are, are murderous. My biggest fear was having some sort of accident or if a friend was in the car, the possibility of killing them if I, you know, lost control of the car by having a, a panic attack. And my husband was in the car when um, I lost control and I just threw up my hands and said, I can't do this. I couldn't go to the doctors. My son was hit by a car and I wouldn't even take him to the hospital. Um, I didn't see friends. Um, I didn't go to the doctors myself, um, no traveling. I, I missed my son's full year of baseball. Um, I wouldn't go in the car. I, I was so afraid of being in the car that um, I missed a lot. In Southern California, traffic stress is prevalent enough to become a therapeutic specialty for some psychologists. One former driving instructor instructor turned licensed marriage, family, and child counselor is Cy Cohn. There may be accumulation of maybe changes in their lives, so with relationship, about job, uh, money problems, things that pile up so much and we get stressed out on, with people I see, they uh, it manifests in how they feel about driving and being in a car. Everything what we feel internally is so often projected out there. 
In other words, if someone's really feeling down or depressed, everyone else they, they're, they look at looks down and depressed. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? When I have people driving that way in the car, they feel like that guy's going right by me. He's giving me a dirty look. What did I do wrong? You know, or someone blows the horn, they think they feel self-conscious like, you know, they're doing something wrong. Cy Cone's office is unlike that of most therapists. It's an automobile. Here, step by step, he offers his clients ways to cope with their driving fears. The important thing is to know that a lot of people feel this way, and uh, also what we want to learn to do is help them feel, you can feel better about yourself and their driving. This tape, Mike, will, will explain a little more about what I'm talking about, and then I want to do an exercise with you, uh, an example of that. But just listen to this part first, it's helpful. All right. To help you feel better about yourself and about your driving, you first must change your association how you feel in the car. The essence of Cy Cone's treatment is learning to relax, but not all, all freeway stress requires special therapy. So if somebody is driving right now on the freeway, as I'm driving right now on the freeway, what are tips they can do? Well, the first thing is, is relaxing their arms and shoulders a little bit. I remind myself of that. It's a tendency to grip the wheel tighter. Leaning back and stretching, moving your arms and shoulders like this a little bit. Massaging your neck and your shoulders. You can do this while you're driving and you're not impeding anybody. Moving your neck around a little bit. There's isometric exercises, like pushing against the seat and relaxing again. Raising the shoulders, relaxing them down again. I do a whole exercise with people when we're stopped about the muscle tension and relaxing again. It's called progressive relaxation. That helps. Cy Cone isn't the only freeway phobia therapist. If you feel the stress of the commute getting out of control, the important thing is to seek help. Today, thanks to therapy, Debbie, Nancy, and Teresa are back on the road. Biofeedback helped me uh, learn how to relax. It uh, taught me when I'm on the freeway or on the streets, if I seen a sign and I was panicking, to imagine clowns on those so I would smile and realize that it's not the end of the world and you're, you're going to make it. All of a sudden one day here I was driving down Wilshire Boulevard and it was such an exciting experience. I was so happy because my not driving had always kept me dependent on other people and it was, I felt like I was growing up. It's a great thing. I would say that it's like being an alcoholic. You're never really cured. You have lapses, um, and you just have to keep working at it. And you have to um, just accept the fact that you'll always have to work at it. Some kinds of stress may be an inevitable part of life in any modern American city. But when it comes to transportation, therapy is not the only way to relieve the pressures of commuting. Carpooling, for example, is one of the ways that you can share the burdens of driving. And if you can catch a bus or a commuter train, the trip to and from work can turn traffic stress into a time to just sit back and relax. <laughs>